Welcome back to season two of the West Ham Way, and today we find out who is in our Champions League group. Lots of things have changed and happened since we last met, but before we move on, let's jump straight into the group stage draw. Who are we going to face in the Champions League? Of course, the best way to do the Champions League draw is to do it manually. Just keep clicking draw next team until it gets to the fourth seeds which we are part of. In fact, we are the lowest ranked team in the Champions League. Looking at these groups, which group do we want to avoid? Well, Group H jumps out straight away. Juve, Barca, Borussia Dortmund want to avoid this one. PSG, Real Madrid. Oh, don't fancy our chances in that one either. I think the easiest one is probably Group G, but even then, it will be a bit of a challenge. Or Group C even. Well, let's find out who we're going to get. Oh, well, that was quick. Bayern Munich, Ajax, and AC Milan. My gosh. What a hard group that's going to be. West Ham United hand a tough group. Well, you are not kidding. Bayern Munich, AC. Oh, my God. It's going to be tough. Ajax as well. Can we get through that group? Well, we'll have to find out in the future. However, let's have a little look at the past because the transfer window is almost finished and we have brought in a few new faces. And by a few new faces, I actually mean six new players. Of course, there's only five on the screen. For the other one, we need to go back one season. And we have brought in Irfan Khan Kasveki or something like that. I'm just going to call him Irfan. Great player, midfield orchestrator, attributes in all the right places, 16 passing, technique and first touch. We're trying to up the quality in the centre of midfield and this guy does just that. As well as Irfan in the middle, we've also managed to persuade Ruben Neves to leave Wolverhampton Wanderers and come join us over here at West Ham. Again, a phenomenal footballer, a cultured defensive midfielder with professional personality. He should be a really, really good signing for us. 14 first touch, 17 passing, 16 in technique, and 17 in vision. Means that this guy with the ball at his feet, he's going to be deadly. We also brought in... Vinicius Jr. on loan from Real Madrid on huge money, but he is a bit of an upgrade on that left-hand wing, looking like a phenomenal young Brazilian already. Hopefully he can develop just a little bit more this season. He was on loan at Liverpool last year where he scored seven goals. He's only played one game for me so far and he has scored, which we'll get on to very, very soon. But very happy to have this guy, Champions League quality player. And of course, with that group before, we're going to need it. We also strengthened at centre-back. We brought in Luis Felipe here, 24-year-old. A very, very, very solid centre-half. Currently, he's starting at the back. I don't know if he's going to be the long-term starter, but these mental attributes make me think he should be. The only thing that worries me is his concentration is just a little bit too low. But six foot two, an absolute machine in the air, heading, tackling, an absolute monster. Hopefully, he can indeed get the crowd going. And lead us to some victories. The final defensive improvement is at right back. Even after Ben Johnson's heroics last season. I just felt that we needed a little bit more quality in the right back position. And Emerson is definitely that. He's came in on loan from Barcelona for the season. And he's got very average stats. But for a right back, it's everything you want. He's solid at the back with his tackling and heading. He's solid going forward with his crossing and dribbling. All in all, a very, very, very good right back. And the final addition is Arezzo. Of course, he has been a football manager for a few years as a wonder kid. Decided to bring him in this year for £2 million. But he didn't actually get a work permit. So I've shipped him off to Borussia Dortmund where, of course, he hasn't played a single minute of football. But hopefully he will develop using their facilities. Have a year in Germany too. So hopefully it will help with the work permit problem, I guess. But if it doesn't, we'll just sell them and make a little bit of profit. So, end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Bit of a gamble, this one. And that gamble has so far paid off. We are currently unbeaten in the Premier League, sitting in third place up here. 4-0 win over Leeds, a 1-1 against Villa, and a fantastic 5-2 victory over Newcastle United. A great West Ham way game of football, this one. I kind of wish it was recorded, but what a result that is. 5-2. And as you can see here, Tottenham and Arsenal lead the way. So we are not currently in control of London, but hopefully that will change as the season progresses. Salcedo is bossing it with five goals. 
two player of the match performances. And Warber is getting three assists, which is interesting for Warber. Because last time you've seen him, he was playing centre-back. Now, however, Warber is sitting in at left-back. We've changed the formation ever so slightly. We're going for a 4-3-3 approach. We're trying to get the most out of this midfield three because now the midfield area is a strength of us. The team needs to be changed a little bit for the Brighton game, of course. We've got Emerson being injured. Salcedo is injured too for a couple of days. So let me get to the Brighton game and I'll run you through the team. So this is the 11 we're going to go for for the game against Brighton. Livakovic is going to continue in goal. Even though he's requested to leave, no team actually wants to buy him. People are only offering like 3-4 million for him. So until we get a reasonable offer, he's going to stay. And to be honest, he's playing actually quite well. 7.27 so far. He can keep his spot for now for sure. Ben Johnson, last season's hero, is going to get a game at right back. Luis Philippe and Christoph Ayer is going to play at the back with Warbur at left back. Rice, Neves, Irfan in the middle with Jared Bowen coming back in on the right. Junior on the left. Dahlberg up front. It's a very, very strong 11. Looking forward to this season. Let's hope we can carry on the good form in today's live comp. Let's get to the game and see how it goes. The first live comp of the season against Brighton. And if I'm honest, this season is going incredibly well so this far. Hopefully it doesn't all derail the first time I press record. But let's find out as Brighton start with the ball with the first highlight. But we are putting a bit of pressure on. The pressing is good. Brighton there, play out from the back with a huge long ball up up to Barco there on that right on that right wing. But Warber does what he's done ever so well so far this season. He wins the ball and plays it short. He's really coming to his own since he's playing left back. Christoph Ayer, what is that? His white plays a weird ball across to Lalana, but we clear it. And Dahlberg picks up the loose ball, plays it through to Vinicius Jr. Here we go. All that money. And he's shot from miles away and the keeper saved it easily. That's a shame. Irfan with the corner. Powers it in this Aya. But Herrerin? Well, how do you say that? Herrerin? <laughs> Herrerin in goal for Brighton there. Saved it easily. That's a funny name to say. <laughs> Anyways, 20 minutes gone and we've just popped up to second place there. So Arsenal must be dropping some points. And we have defended well as Jared Bowen is counter-attacking very quickly. We've got Dahlberg in front. But he seems to be going on his own. What a run this is. He gets tackled as Irfan. Dahlberg. Irfan again. Can he get a shot away? He can. It's in. It's 1-0. Irfan. Can Kavechi. Or something like that. It's 1-0. Happy days. Come on. And he has Bowen now. Belting through their defence. It's actually a great tackle. Dahlberg and Irfan play a lovely 1-2. And there's Irfan. Just curls it into the bottom corner. Happy days. That kind of run from Irfan has been a common place, to be honest, so far this season. Playing two Mazzalas with a deep line playmaker really allows us to play with a front five as Rice and Irfan just belt forward and join these three up front. I have turned overlap off as well, so Johnson and Warbaugh won't be getting caught out too much running up the pitch, hopefully. At least that's the technical plan. If it works, who knows, but there's logic in the madness. Rodriguez now with the second half kicking off. First highlight, of course, 60 minutes in, and Brighton have the ball. Playing out from the back with Lalana on that left wing. Rodriguez again. There's Lewis Dunk. Interesting passage of play this from Brighton, really focusing on playing it out from the back, keeping the ball well. Our press has caused them to make a bit of a mistake there. There's Dolberg and Rice driving forward in that Mazzola role. Vinicius Jr. There's Dolberg. He fires it home. It's 2 0. What a great way to start the second half. A ferocious strike according to the commentator. Let's check it out in 3D. Dahlberg picks up the clearance. There's Rice there powering past Brighton's midfield. Vinicius Jr. plays it through. Dahlberg first time left foot. Get in. Wow, what a strike. 2-0. There's a highlight straight after the goal though. And as we know, that normally means there's going to be a chance. Is it Brighton's or is it ours? Let's find out as Barco has it on that right wing. With Lamptey overlapping. Whips it in. There's Nsame. It's hit the post and Johnson clears. An hour gone and I'm very happy with how it's going. The team's performing well. We're getting into all the right positions. I am actually going to make a change though. Declan Rice is going to come off. Just to save his legs. He is playing as a 6.5 so he's not having a great game. But I'm going to bring Almada on in this Mazzola role. I brought him here last game. 
maybe against Newcastle or the game before, and he played incredibly well, just driving into the space, and he's got so much composure on the ball, it really allows him to play those through balls for Dahlberg. Final 10 minutes of this game against Brighton then, and to be honest, we've got it all under control. Irfan's going to come off for four nails. We're actually going to bring off Vinicius Jr. on that left wing as well, because he's exhausted. Going to give Ben Rama a run out. And hopefully that's just going to see the game through. We've played incredibly well. As Brighton are driving forward, actually. Maybe I spoke too soon as Lamptey, but it's a great block by the defender there. And there we have it then. A fantastic 2-0 victory over Brighton. A brilliant way to start the live comp season. And look at this defensive performance. This is what I'm after. Warbrook at left back. Amazing. Luis Felipe, Livakovic finally coming good. Ben Johnson, he's always great, isn't he? Let's be honest. Irfan with a man of the match performance as well. Very, very happy with this. The starting 11, it's got potential to be great. After that 2-0 victory then, we are sitting in second place. Very happy to be there after four games, of course, but means nothing after four games. We still want to be up here after 38. And if anything... Is it too early to dream about the title? Probably. We're probably one or two years away. But you never know. It's always good to dream. Speaking of dreaming, we are going to have to dream and wish and pray, whatever you want to say, to try and get out of this Champions League group. Ajax, AC Milan, Bayern Munich. Three fantastic teams. But, you know, we're there on credit. We're also a fantastic team. So, what I think we'll do is we will come back for the Liverpool and Bayern Munich game, we will have a double header against two of Europe's greatest teams. Should be a good one. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please do drop a like. Consider subscribing. I'm aiming for 50 subscribers before FM22. So if you could help me get there, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you again once more. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.